I'm curious more about that magical moment. You know, like, like, I, I, I've just had those experiences too, where it's like you have this magical moment that affects you, like with, with Peter O'Toole and that moment with the teacup. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. that took you away. Uh, I had a magical moment once on stage. Uh, yeah. It, um, it was, we, we were doing a th three character comedy. Uh, Jim and I produced it. Uh, and uh, Jim and my wife in the play were plotting, the first act is a comedy, we're plotting my murder. Second act, my wife and I were plotting his murder. In the third act, him and I were plotting her murder. Uh, but there was no one gets murdered. Nobody gets murdered. <laughs> but one, one night, I mean, sometimes, you know, it's a comedy. Some nights you get laughs on certain things. Sometimes it's quiet, depending on the audience. But one night, uh, my magical moment was I had this one line. I had a, I had a gun, and, and someone said, What kind of gun is it? And I said, A Kenmore. And, you know, and but the audience started laughing and it turned to applause. And that's the only time that ever happened to me in my life. <laughs> and that was a real magical moment for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's, 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 there's nothing like it. It's almost a spiritual experience. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's nothing like it. When, when you were talking, when you were interviewing um, the actors that you interviewed in your books, um, it's kind of interesting because that that was uh um it kind of came out of the blue it came out of this this moment that it sounded like you didn't have planned at that time but when when you were talking interviewing all the people in the books how many like were there any of those unplanned moments that you, that you recall them talking about or did that come, did that theme come up a lot when you were interviewing people uh, um some some of the people were really easy to interview. Some were a little more difficult. I mean, they're all real friendly. I mean, but like one guy in particular, George J. Lewis, uh, Jeff, the guy in Captain Calamity, his, yeah, his answers yeah. would be little short answers. Short he would sit back in his chair and couch yeah. and wait for the next question. Uh, other people, there's a, a well, well, Mario Dano. You, if you know uh, who he is. Uh, if you know who he is. Uh, the, the, the first he, question usually yeah, is. If you can tell the, when and where you were born, a little bit about growing up and how you became interested in acting. And made your break into it. And made your break. And he talked for a couple of hours before we asked another question. There's another actor we have six hours of video, I mean, of audio tape on, uh, and we, could, we couldn't use it all. Uh, a book in itself. Um, but yeah, there, there are moments like um, people des describing this whole ancient era that no longer exists. I mean, uh, one guy, Jeff Corey, this talking about nothing to do with theater uh, or acting, but talking about where he grew up in New York and the tree line. He, he described it. You, you could sit back, you could, you could picture the way the place looked. Uh, people talking about making their way from back east to Hollywood, some of them riding the freight trains and the, the stories they, they told of what happened. Uh, and um, and one guy, after we got done with the interview, uh, he said, well, that was relatively painless. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, yeah, there, there are special moments uh, in some of those. Uh, one lady that we interviewed, Marion Schilling, uh, she was an old actress back in the 30s. Uh, her dad had a theater. And that's when they built a ghost. He was playing Dracula on stage and all that. And he was starting to, trying to learn English. He thought it was about driving a steak. He thought a steak was a steak uh, with meat. Was meat. Uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, she said that reading our books after it was, uh, she, it was like, nice compliment. It was a nice compliment, yeah. As she said, it was like sitting across the table having a conversation with a person. Uh, you know, and you get to really just know the people. Uh, and people were very uh, open about their experiences. And we, we weren't after any, any so, and, and, and bad and, stories and stuff like that. And, and everybody's section, we would send it to them. And, and and to look at and, and to you know take out or or add to whatever they wanted, yeah. So it'd be what they wanted. And uh, um, I was going to say something, but all minds forget. I'm going to be 80 years old in December, but I don't want to advertise that to anyone because I don't think I'm too old to act. So <laughs> that's a front problem with, with act theater is that there's not a lot of good parts for people in their 70s. I mean, uh, the parts. 
get lesser and lesser. There are more younger people, and then there's less competition. But uh, it is, you know, it gets harder and harder to find the parts that you really want. And, to and if you look at movies, when you when you reach forty years old, the parts the parts become less and less and less and less. And that's back in the old days under studio contract, you know, you could work forever. Or if you're lucky, like Walter Brennan or G -G -G Abby Hayes, you know, you can become old character actors. But uh, but, yeah, but the, the people we interviewed, that's where we really learned it from. The people we interviewed, they worked a whole lot during their 20s and 30s. But when they started getting into the 40s, the parts kind of diminished and getting lesser, smaller parts. Uh, and today is worse, I think, because, uh, you know, you see a name, and you, you know, know it, you never see it again. I yeah, mean, these people we interviewed, they had, most of them had 40, 50 year careers. Uh, and uh, you see their names, you know, we, we watch the old movies and Jim and I say, yo, we know who everybody in the cast is. If you watch the credits at the end of the movies these days, you know who the big stars might be, but most of everybody else you never heard of again and never hear of again. I mean. Um, who was the who was the actress that I mentioned the other day? We just talked about her today from the Oxbow incident. Mar Mary Beth Hughes. Mary Beth Hughes. Thank you. Uh, so Mary Beth Hughes is a great example of this because in my, uh, my not uh, aside from the show, my, my real job, my day job, um, I, I uh, stumbled on uh, two films of hers like in the same week uh, that she had done. And so I noticed, started noticing her name in the credits, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you start going, oh, I remember her from whatever right and when you look at like a film library of a decade right in this case i think it was the 1950s um and you know you kind of get it all condensed you know we could watch 10 movies of the 1950s in one week right but it took you know 10 years to make those movies right so i don't know if a comparison is for today because i i see what you're saying but I wonder if 20 years from now we would say, oh, I know Karen Gillan. She was in these 25 movies, right? Um, I don't know. I, uh, I, think it, I think everyone sees the time that we're in right now as being much slower, right? Or, or uh, people not working as much or not as much great things coming out. Um, but I, I feel like that's just a symptom of the fact that we're here in real time. Yeah, well, also back in the 50s, uh, even in the 60s, there was so much more work. I mean, they made more, they made, you know, of course, these days they have all kinds of movies being made for Netflix. They, they, there's a lot of stuff being made out there, but they had, you know, double features at the show, you know, the, you know, and they, and the TV series is a lot of them are half hour shows and they weren't continued from one week to the next. Each episode had the stars, different cast. had the stars, but the rest of the cast was different each week. And these days, a lot of the TV shows are the same, you know, it's continued. So it's the same, it's not enough, you know, it's not enough work for the, all the actors that are out there. <laughs>